Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to cover some more intermediate to advanced tips for Final Cut Pro. Basically, these are tips that are gonna make your editing process easier and faster and really kind of kick your videos up a notch once you've mastered the basics. If you are new to Final Cut and you haven't watched my video for beginners, I will link it in the description box down below. And that video really covers the absolute basics, but I did get some requests in that video to make a part two with some more advanced tips, so here we are. I will leave a list of topics that I'll be covering in today's video in the description box down below. And if you like this video while you're watching it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and let's get started. Okay, so for this video, I'm gonna be using this as an example. This is my most recent video that I posted on my channel. I'm gonna use this one as an example because as you see, we have a lot of clips here. We have the main storylines, secondary storylines, audio clips. So this is a good project to use as an example. So the first thing I wanna talk about is various ways you can retime clips. And when I was first using Final Cut Pro, I thought you had to go up to the top to modify and retime and select whatever you wanted to do to retime a clip, but it is way easier than that. So let's just select a clip we wanna retime. And right here, you can see this little speed dial. If you drop that down, it houses all of your retiming options, but you can also quickly just hit Command R and if you drop down the 100, you can choose any of these options here to change the speed if you want to make it go faster or slower or customize the speed of your clips. But this little drop down right here has a lot of additional options. The first one being reverse clip. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out how to do this and I would see it in other people's videos. And it is really that simple. You just click reverse clip. So as you can see now, it has these backwards arrows and it says reverse normal. And that's how you know if your clip is going in reverse. You can also obviously reverse it in slow motion or sped up and reversed, which can be cool depending on what kind of videos you edit. But for now, I'm actually going to reset speed and it's just gonna put it at normal 100% for now because I do wanna show you another feature which is rewind. And this is actually gonna take the clip and add another clip onto it. So let's say we wanna rewind it in double the speed, which is gonna be 2x. As you can see, we have our normal clip, and then here, it's gonna be rewound in double the speed at 200%, and then it's gonna add the normal clip back to the beginning. So if you are someone who's filming stunts or something and you wanna do like a forward, and then a rewind in fast motion and then a forward again, this is a really good option for doing that. Instead of having to just copy and paste your clips back to back and put one in rewind, this is just gonna do it all for you. You also may have seen this in other people's videos, but there is an instant replay feature on Final Cut Pro. So if you just go to instant replay, you can do it in full speed if you want. As you see, it says instant replay up here in the corner, or you can do it in slow motion as well. Another cool feature I wanna talk about is optical flow. And obviously this clip right here isn't in my video about Gmail, but I wanted to use it as an example to show you what clips can sometimes look like in slow-mo. So sometimes they can get pretty choppy, which you may have noticed if you've tried to use slow-mo on your final cut before. So let's try slow and let's do it at 50%. As you can see, it's just kind of jumpy. It doesn't have that like smooth slow-mo effect that I am looking for. So what I'm actually gonna do is click on my clip and go down to video quality and click optical flow. And now as you can see, it's gonna be analyzing for optical flow. So this does take a little bit of time depending on the length of your clip. So we're just gonna let it analyze for optical flow and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Has my water bottle been there the whole time? Sorry. <laughs> okay, so our clip is done analyzing. And I hope you can tell the difference. I definitely can. And it just seems a lot smoother and cleaner and a lot more professional. Another way you can make your shots look really cool and cinematic is by a reverse Ken Burns. So I'm sure you all know about regular Ken Burns. It feels a little PowerPoint presentation-y in my opinion. Obviously do whatever you want and feels creative to you, but I'm gonna show you what a reverse Ken Burns looks like. So we're gonna go into our crop section and Ken Burns over here 
And you can actually swap the start and end points by clicking these two arrows right here. So as you can see now, it's gonna start more zoomed in and kind of pull out to a wider shot this way. And you can preview what it's gonna look like by clicking the play button. Another thing that you should note with Ken Burns is as you can see, if you move this box around, the center point, which is the X here, moves around with it. But if you wanna hone in on a center spot, so say my cup here is the center spot I wanna hone in on, if I click the option key and zoom in and out, it's gonna keep my midpoint honed in on that cup because that is what I want it honed in on. So that's a trick rather than like zooming out and then having to drag it to where you want it to be, just holding down the option key and adjusting from there. And if you're watching a preview of your Ken Burns, if you just click the space bar, it'll bring you back to the editing section. The next tip is something that drove me insane for the longest time. And all of my issues were solved when I found out about compound clips. So as you can see here, my main timeline is filled with a bunch of clips that I'm using to make this video. And then I have a secondary timeline with screen recordings and then actually a third storyline up on the top here. And maybe I decide that I want these all to be in fast motion because of what I'm saying and it doesn't quite match up unless these clips are moving a little bit faster. So I want to retime them by speeding them up four times. Now they've split up. Now I have to go in and drag them close to each other, but, but then, you know, if they don't overlap correctly, there's gonna be a gap, and then I have to zoom in, and it, it just, there's a better way, and I didn't even know about it. So we're just gonna undo this all. So now that these are all together in a way that I like them, if I highlight all of them, right click, and click New Compound Clip, it's gonna make it one clip. So now if I wanna retime that whole segment, I can just retime it and it's all gonna to be together now instead of all in separate clips. So this is a great thing to do if you've created a secondary timeline like this huge chunk right here. I don't want these to move. So I'm gonna create a compound clip with all of these because I have cut and edited them exactly where they all needed to go. Now they're just in one clip and I can move it around as I please. So another thing I found super helpful is say I wanted to take this clip of me pouring my soda and I wanted to copy it but put it as an element on my secondary timeline on top and not in my main timeline. If I just command copy and then let's say I wanted to put it here and command paste, it's gonna paste it into the main timeline but I don't want it there, I want it above. So if we undo that, if you click option paste instead of command paste, it's gonna paste it above your main timeline. Another thing you might run into is trying to move clips that are actually tethered to other clips. So say I wanted to move this clip, see all the things that come with me, I don't want those to come with me. So there are a couple ways that you can change that. So the first way is to hold down this tilde key right here and see how there's this orange icon now. I can move this independently of the things that were tethered to it in the past, which can be really nice if you need to rearrange something but you have a lot of things tethered to it. You can also change the tether point of a clip on your secondary timeline. So let's say, see how this one is tethered here. Say I want this to be tethered to this clip so that I can move this one around independently. If I take this right here and move it on top of the clip that I want to tether it to. If I now click the clip that I want to make a new tether for, if I do option command and then click right there, as you can see it made a new tether. So now I can move this clip without disrupting the clip that it used to be tethered to. You can also pop a clip from your main timeline into your secondary timeline by clicking option, command, and then just hitting the up arrow. And now that will put it on the secondary timeline with a little placeholder right here. Another thing that I have found to be super helpful when making my edits really, really precise is instead of trying to like zoom in 
with my trackpad or with command plus or minus to get to exactly where I want to cut something. If you just hold down the Z key, as you can see this magnifying glass pops up. If I draw a box over exactly where I want to zoom in, it's going to zoom in to that point instantly, which can be super, super helpful. And then if you want to zoom out to see your whole timeline at once, if you just click Shift Z, it will bring it all into frame. So let's zoom back in here. All right, and so say I want to split this clip, and then if we click A, we can get rid of that magnifying glass. And so say I want to split this clip right here. So I'm watching through, and I'm like, oh shoot, I can't get it to the precise spot that I wanted to clip it. So what you can actually do is use your arrow keys to scrub through your timeline frame by frame. So as you can see, it's moving one frame at a time, backward or forward, so I can clip it exactly where I want it to, which can be super helpful to make really smooth transitions. Another way you can make your editing go super quickly is instead of splitting clips and then splitting them again and then deleting the middle portion, what you can actually do is just, you know, split your clip and say I wanted this portion cut out. Instead of chopping then deleting, I can just click option and then the left bracket and that middle clip is automatically deleted. I didn't have to split and then delete. It just takes out a step, which if you're doing a really lengthy edit, can save you time. And finally, I wanna talk about recording a voiceover within Final Cut. This can be super, super helpful for all types of videos. So if you wanna record a voiceover starting right here, let's say, if you go up to Window and then click Record Voiceover, if you click the Record button, it's gonna count you down and then you can start talking and as you can see on the bottom here, it is recording your audio. So that is it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other Final Cut Pro tips that you love and use all the time, make sure you leave them in the comments to help other people out. And if you like this video, I really hope you subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye.